It's Vanessa from Wander Onwards, and today I have a really embarrassing story to tell you. So the scariest thing about moving abroad for me was the tax situation. America actually treats all Americans abroad as if they're residents, so there's no hiding anywhere, no matter how far you go. And now that I have a little bit of money to protect, I really started to get involved more with my taxes and to really understand what is expected of me. And so today we're going to talk about the three main things that you should be considering when you're an American abroad, and we're going to show how I f***ed it all up. Before I continue, I want to remind everyone that this YouTube video is not tax, legal, or accounting advice. Okay, honey? I am not a certified financial accountant. I'm not a certified financial planner. I'm just a girl who has messed up her life and wants to talk about it. You should definitely consult your own tax advisors, lawyers, and accountants before engaging in any transactions, like I should have done. So today we're going to be talking about how I made a thousand dollar mistake when I was filing my taxes for 2019. You're going to learn about information on reporting your salary, reporting your wealth, information on reporting your foreign bank accounts and common mistakes and myths. We have to file taxes every single year, regardless of where you are, what you do in, it's a nightmare. Honestly, America, get your shit together. For me, I now have assets in the United Kingdom, America, and now Germany. I also have a UK company that I own, and I've just opened a US company to try to manage my tax implications and risk a little bit better. A hard lesson I had to learn was, just because you can move money around the world, doesn't mean you should. <laughs> So in the past, my spending habits have not always been the most responsible. As a result, now that I have my big girl job, I actually have money that I'm using to invest, I wanna buy a house, but I need to make sure that everything back in America is okay, because I don't wanna pay a dime more, okay? I'm not paying a dime more than I have to. I pay almost 50% here in Germany, so in summation, no. Because I moved to Germany, and I still have taxes and a company in the United Kingdom, things got complicated. So the first thing I got hit with was a $250 bill for a one-to-one -one tax consultation with an expat tax expert. I decided to use Greenback because I was doing loads of research. I had a few other friends that were doing the same with them. So why not? Once I got into that consultation, I realized that there were so many things I had no idea about and my own accountant had no idea about, otherwise he would have asked me for that information. It was really a eyes wide open sort of experience and it began my journey down the rabbit hole to figure out what else I had messed up. So to file a proper federal tax return, I'm gonna be paying $485 to do so. Fortunately, this entire process was actually quite pleasant. Can, can tax be pleasant? because the Greenback service actually had a Salesforce customer like flow. So every section I would answer questions, I would upload the correct documents. So it was really easy for me to get my life together. Then I paid $100 to do the FBAR or the foreign bank account report. So for the Greenback services, you pay $100 for every five bank accounts you have. And thank goodness I only had five that I was keeping track of or that I needed to keep track of because then it would get even more expensive. Essentially, if you have over $10,000 worth of cash in any of your bank accounts at any point in time, the government needs to know. Fun hack. Your bank actually keeps track of all of these reports for you. So I was able to go on Barclays, RBS, Revolut, and just download my statement for the year. It would show how much money is coming in and out and what the highest amount was in that account for that year. So then I'm gonna pay anywhere from 300 to $585 to file my small business tax returns in America. Essentially, from what I understand, it's just expressing how much money goes in and out, the expenses and how much money I paid in tax 
TBD to see if I owe America anything else. This is actually why I decided to open a company in the United States and I'm going to start moving my business over there. This way I can keep all of that money inside of the United States and lessen my headache, but I will have to do additional reports apparently because I'm not living in the United States for longer than 35 days a year. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ping that little bell while you're at it. If you're interested in living abroad yourself as an American, I have loads of resources for just that. First, you can check out a free blog post that I have called How to Move and Live Abroad as an American, where I've broken down all the steps that it takes to move your life abroad. Second, I also have a How to Move Abroad Masterclass, which is a five-week intensive online course where you're walked through the end-to-end -end process with other people just like you. Every week we have a live class where we talk about our hopes and dreams and feelings, and I'll be walking you through things like immigration, visa processing, figuring out where you want to go, how to find work, and so much more. I'll link that down below, or you can go to startyourgreatescape.com. So when you're looking to report your salary abroad, you're going to use something called the Foreign Earned Income Exclusion, or a FIF. 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 F-E-I-E. FIF. Foreign Earned Income Exclusion allows you to exclude a certain amount of foreign earned income from U.S. tax. For 2019, the amount you're able to exclude is just under $106,000 per year. You can check out this link to confirm that. You can use the IRS form 2555 to do just that. So this is what it means. Basically, if you earned $110,000 abroad in foreign earned income, you lucky devil, then you can subtract a $105,900 from that income, and whatever is left is taxable in the United States. You definitely need to consult a financial planner and tax accountant because there are ways to exclude or add income, and you need to know what that means. There's also a second way to report this income, but it's really complicated, and if you choose to do so, you're locked into that style of reporting for five years. Next, let's talk about wealth or foreign bank accounts, along with anything that provides you with income and interest. One, there are two forms that you need to be concerned about. One is the FBAR, or the Foreign Bank Account Report. This is what I was talking about earlier. If you have over $10,000 per year at any given time, in summation, in total, then you need to start reporting your bank accounts. The FBAR needs to be filed electronically on something called the FinCEN Form 411. And you should ask your accountant about that, not me. The second form you need to consider is the FATCA, or the FATCA. So this is the Foreign Account Compliance Act, aka Form 8938, and this needs to be filed if you exceed one of the following. If your wealth is over $200,000 at any point of the year, either filing separately or married, then you're required to file this. For the FATCA, you should definitely look into it yourself because it's really confusing. It's a lot. And you should definitely ask your accountant or a tax advisor about what's best for you. A website I like to use as a good resource when it comes to tax and filing is americansabroad.org backslash US taxes abroad for dummies. So let's talk about common expat taxes, myths and pitfalls. Number one, you do have to file taxes every year. The government wants to know what you're up to and Uncle Sam is gonna come a knock in. But as we've talked about with foreign earned income exclusions, they might not necessarily take any money from you. Number two, you can have too many bank accounts. As we spoke about before, if they ever come collectively above 10,000, you gotta report them. Things might not necessarily happen as a result of it, but the government wants to know. Number three, tax advantaged accounts abroad aren't necessarily tax advantaged for you. I learned this the hard way because I was using UK pensions and UK ISA allowances to invest and build a retirement plan. And then my accountant told me that it could potentially be taxed at 37% per year, per year. Now, I don't think you understand per year. 
And of course the 37% is only on income earned, but what if we have another corona incident where I'm investing for 10 years, I pay my 37% per year, and then a crisis happens and everything is wiped out. What the hell was I paying that tax for? Number four, you can move money back to America. So after much deliberation with my accountant, we've decided that for me, it would be best to start moving some of my assets back home. This way I can continue to invest, Potentially, I'll be able to use a personal 401k with my company in the United States, uh, and this will make my life a whole lot easier. Also, in the United States, there's a 15% tax on brokerages when it comes to long-term gains, and that's much lower than Germany's 25% flat tax, so why wouldn't I move my money back? You can open a business abroad and you don't have to report it. That is wrong. That is very, very wrong. The government might not necessarily say that you owe anything, but like I said before, they're going to want to know what you're up to. They want to know all of it. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about creating entrepreneurial ventures abroad. In conclusion, hire someone to do this for you. Honestly, it is worth every dime. And even though I'm always encouraging people to take financial matters and information into their own hands, it's important that you don't make mistakes while you're abroad because information is hard to backtrack on and things get out of hand quite quickly. For me, I moved abroad 100% by myself. I've never had a company supporting me. I've never had um, disposable income until recently. So I can kind of understand why this started to catch up to me. But now that I'm a functioning adult with a real job, I've decided to dedicate this money to making sure that my money abroad is safe and so I can start building wealth in a much smarter, more optimized way. If you guys enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. I release new content every week and I love to talk about living abroad because I think every American should do so at least once. It allows us to become more empathetic. It teaches us new languages and skills and hell, we deserve it. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to get notified about new videos every week.